Welcome back. We're trying to figure out now whether Mr. Natsumi did leave your box by going up here and then down here and then crossing the road. Or if he could have actually got a different route because he could have come down here easily. Or he could have come over here and then down through the middle of this block and then down here. We just need him to avoid this area, which is entirely possible. Which means we're going to inject the acetation. But they claim we passed the location of the incident, so we'll raise an objection. The assertion just made by the prosecution is fundamentally flawed. Explain yourself, counsel. Um, yes, my lord. You, you can see what I mean on this map. Returning from your books to his lodgings, Mr. Natsumi could have followed the route suggested by the prosecution. However, that isn't the only conceivable route to take between the two places. Yeah, that's, that's one of the routes that I was thinking. If the defendant used the streets, look what happens. He arrives back at his lodgings, without passing the location where the victim was attacked. Objection! Talking back to a clown is a fool's errand, of course. However, I feel compelled to point out that... The route is what is commonly referred to as the long way around. Yeah, but he could have taken the long way. Ah. On a cold winter's night, why would any man choose to take a longer route home? If you don't know your way around London well enough to know it's the longer way? Well, um, um... The answer is extremely simple. He wouldn't. In other words... The accused took the obvious route back to his lodgings and is the obvious perpetrator of this crime. Objection! But, 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 but... Ah, ah, yes, I've got it. Obviously, you must ask the man himself. Ask Mr. Natsumi which route he took home. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's gonna be like, ah. I have already informed the court of the accused's response to such questioning. He claims he has no recollection. Really? Uh... That's right. As I said, the bloke seems to spend his time outside wandering aimlessly from A to B. The day was no exception. He says he doesn't remember where he was or which route he took home. I don't... I don't believe this. I thank you, my learned friend and suggest that we do not waste any more of the court's time by wandering aimlessly around this subject. Pray, what say you insightful jurors? But, but even if that is the case, the defense still... I agree with Lord Van Zyks. Wholeheartedly. And in every way. What? I don't believe it. Does, does, does this mean... We members of the jury are completely convinced now. Already? Really? Very well, in that case, I hereby call upon all members of the jury to present your findings to the court. Guilty! 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 Who? Guilty! 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 Guilty. <laughs> Yes, but... It would appear the jury's leaning is unanimous. <laughs> to the insightful members of the jury, I applaud your brave resolve. Your serve, queen and country, admirably. Mr. Narahodo. No, not yet. This isn't over yet. I still have one last chance to sway the opinion of the jury. I have to tip the balance of those scales the other way. 
have to turn this around. Somehow. <laughs> Those aren't the eyes of Quarry, not yet willing to give up and die. So I presume you intend to wield your rights again in this trial? Rights of the defense written in to antiquated British law and that should have been buried long ago. Call it antiquated if you will. But it's the defense's prerogative to carry out a summation examination if it so chooses. Very well, counsel. In accordance with the letter of the law, we shall proceed with a summation examination. Are the members of the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Of course we're ready. I'm all too familiar with that. Nippity's with a snapper and his onkus refusal to throw in his alley. Very well then. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will each explain on what grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. As judicial findings, in it. The jurors' contentions. For pity's sake, that little Nipponese on duty already admitted it himself, didn't he? If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why, it could only have been the victim. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop, not in winter. So the poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful. And that was it. I really don't care. Can't we just wrap this up now? I've got work to be doing. Hmm? Your books? Eh? Nice shop, that. The Bourbon books? Hmm. No, not worth a visit. That was your fine... What? You... Hmm. With any minor exceptions, the reasons for finding the defendant guilty are all too clear. What? When the stabbing occurred, the only two people at the scene were the victim and the accused. And the accused himself has admitted to seeing the victim in her green overcoat sink to the ground before his eyes. Furthermore, we have heard from the inspector that the defendant then fled the scene. I must say, I would have ample grounds to convict this man already. Oh dear, even the judge appears convinced of Mr. Natsumi's guilt now. Oh, why did he have to run away like that? How are we supposed to believe in some phantom attacker that nobody could see? This is impossible. How could I possibly make a case for the defense? <laughs> Mr. Narahodo, this is no time for grumbling. We want to force the trial to continue. Yes, I know. I have to turn the tide. I must make the jurors change their mind. Well, four of them, at least. Exactly. We have no choice but to forge forward. You have the floor, Council. Begin your summation examination. Yes, my lord. Uh. I just need to keep this trial going somehow. Whatever it takes. Come on, Ryu. You can do it. Jury examination. I want to question the ones that don't actually really seem to have a point. The defense is rebuttal. But pretty say that little Nipponese oddity already admitted himself, didn't he? No. Hold it! Um, excuse me, but aren't you... It's not what I want to ask him, but... Yes, that's right, I was in the witness stand myself just two days ago. Yes, I had a feeling I knew your face. Well, the side of it, anyway. I remember correctly, you're a banker, aren't you? That's right. After the gold rush down under, I came back to London to work. It was all going swimmingly until you started fossicking around. Bruce Fairplay was a man of repute. Sorry? Don't think I've forgotten how you treated me the other day. You had me, and that young had her pegged as criminals. Oh, well, you know, what under the bridge? Now there's all sorts of rumours buzzing around, and the police have been badgering me non-stop. If, if I could turn back the clock... Well, anyway, I don't know about the hatter, but at least I'm in the clear now. I'm free to make up my own mind about who's guilty and who isn't. Ah, goodness. 
Alright, maybe I might struggle to change this man's mind given our awkward history. Oh dear, I wonder what's become of Mr. First now. If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why right, couldn't he have been the victim? Hmm. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop, not in winter. Like, the, these ones are like fairly make sense. So the poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful. Okay. Was you? Really don't care. I can't just wrap this up now. I've got work to be doing. I need to know more about you. The man's life is on the line here, sir. This will take as long as it takes. Don't get clever with me now, son. My life's on the line too. And so is my family's. Hmm. Likes so you wouldn't understand, but a laborer like me can't afford to take time off. If I don't work, I don't eat. Neither do the wife and kids. Oh, I see. That must be very hard. I go to the union every morning to find out what needs doing. If you're late and the work's taken, it's tough. This time of year, there's water and gas supply pipes bursting left, right, and center. We have to cheap labor to get the roads dug up to fix it. It's a hard slog. From dawn till dusk, you know. So, you were out digging up the roads on the day of the instance as well, were you? That's right. What road? In fact, if I remember rightly, it was just around the corner from where it all happened. By that old bookshop it was. What road? What? Another coincidence? That's right. Mishwam Street it was. Ah, Mishwam Street. On the map, Mr. Narahodo, there are only three named streets. Channel number five, I need you to add that information to your formal statement, please. What's the point in that? Can't we just get the business over with now? Please, sir, it's important. Yeah, fine, I'll do it then. Okay, so we've got that. On the day it happened, I was digging up Mearsham Street from dawn till dusk. Still not much to go on, really. Hmm, your books, yes, nice shop, that. Bomb books? <laughs> no, not worth a visit. Right, let's get more from that. Because we've got nothing from you. Hmm, sorry. Fold it, you say? Fold what? Um, no, no, uh, what I said was hold it. What I wanted to ask was, uh, do you visit your books often? I like the old books they have in there. I enjoy reading them over a nice cup of old tea. Old tea. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. And what time did you visit your books on the day in question? Well, I was picking up books in there all afternoon, and it would have been just before five that I left. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. Just before five, you say? Exactly when the victim was attacked. Are you sure about the time? Oh, yes, uh, no mistake there. I remember it well. I'm not about to forget that day in a hurry, not after the dreadful time I had. What do you mean? Well, I was walking down Calabash Road when I slipped on the ice and donked my head. Oh. You're wearing green. Bumped into you. The books got mixed up. And he bumped into you. Oh. It's always worse after the snow stopped falling. That's when it's most slippery. Knocked myself clean out, I did. I really thought my number was up. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. This happened on Calabash Road? That's right, I live in Cornpipe, you see. Heading down Calabash Road is the quickest way for me to get back from your books. Try number six, I must insist. If you add that information to your formal statement, it may very well be extremely significant. Especially with your green jacket. Hmm, sorry, uh, extremely sick. No, no, I'm quite alright now. <laughs> Just move on, but alright. It sends a shiver down my spine to hear the members of the jury so convinced on Mr. Natsumi's guilt. He did go the other way and he bumped into him. And I can't help feeling that some of their opinions are rather subjective. I agree. It's the irrelevance of what some of them are saying that sends a shiver down my spine. 
Still, at least some of their assertions don't actually incriminate Mr. Natsumi of anything. That's something. We must use that to our advantage, Mr. Narahodo. Cunningly. Cunning like a fox. Yes, you're right. Let's listen to the jurors again. Carefully. And if any of their assertions are at odds, I'll pit them mercilessly against each other. Yes, don't hold back. Pit them all against each other. So it was number two, wasn't it? That she's gone about the green coat. If he said that the warning green collapsed before his eyes, well, it can only have been the victim. No, it can't have been. Could have been him. Objection! Those two statements clearly show a flaw in the juror's reasoning. A flaw? What are you talking about, counsel? Well, juror number two. Juror number six. My, whatever do you mean, sir? I think perhaps the old man didn't hear you. Unbelievable. It's not like I was loud or anything. Yeah, it's not like I was loud or anything. I'd be more inclined to say it's not like I wasn't loud. No, I don't know. There is at least one fact of which we can be sure here. The bookshop receipt found in the defendant's room clearly indicates that on the day of the attack, he had been to your books and purchased a number of second-hand titles. He then returned home on foot. But the man says he has no recollection of his return journey. That's correct. But what he does remember is seeing someone appear in front of him on the way. Someone in a green overcoat who suddenly collapsed on the pavement before his eyes. Yes, we are all well aware of this. The poor young woman who was stabbed, obviously. Objection! Can we really be sure of that, madam? My, whatever do you mean? I'm sure you heard juror number six account of what happened to him that day. That same afternoon, there was somebody else apart from the victim. Who was wearing a green overcoat and who fell over on the icy streets in the neighborhood. Oh my. My goodness, you... You mean... That's right. I'm referring, of course... To hard of hearing, journal number six. Are you really suggesting that the person in the green overcoat whom the defendant saw collapse in front of his eyes was the jolly old gentleman on the end of the bench here with me today? That is entirely possible, yes. After all, the old man has a somewhat similar build to the victim and a coat. Oh, look at that. My goodness me. Mm, sorry, you, you need a pee? And crucially, we know precisely where the old man in the green overcoat fell. Oh, on Calabash Road. Therefore, the person who Mr. Natsumi saw collapsing in front of him was in fact juror number six. It means that the defendant must have taken the long road getting from there to here, a long route back to his lodgings. And if that's true, then clearly, the crime scene on Briar Road where the woman was stabbed was not on his way home. Oh my! You idiot old man, if you hadn't been so daft as to be roaming about there, we'd have boxed this off hours ago. And really, what were you thinking wearing such a fuddling coat? What did you say to me? Is it a crime for the elderly to walk the streets these days? Hmm? Is it a crime to slip over on the ice? It's a crime to keep up with the latest styles and wear a beautiful green overcoat, is it? My lord, I do hope it won't cause any inconvenience, but... You would like to change your leaning, I presume? I do declare that I would. I should like to call for a verdict of not guilty. Thank you. And I would too. What? Is it a crime to change your mind, is it? Well... Boulder Dash, I say, Boulder Dash. Oh, I can't say boulder dash that I might get caught in the YouTube algorithm, you know, swear words and all. Begards, we'll go with begards. Oh, well done, Mr. Narahodo. 
That was wonderful. Thank you. Well, we've managed to change a couple of minds at least. It's strengthened our position somewhat. Yes, and it will prompt the other members of the jury to reconsider their stance as well. They'll be asking themselves if their current leanings are really right or not. Now, if only... We could just identify one more clue or discrepancy that would make them stop doubting Mr. Natsumi. We might be able to tip the balance completely. Yes, that's exactly what we've got to do. Van Zykes is looking to bring this trial to an early conclusion. That's what we have to prevent, by whatever means we have at our disposal. It's gotta be the thing with the road. In fact, he's working on the road, but who do we pit him against? Thank you, Council. On with the summation examination, please. Yes, madam. It's gotta be that. So it's that, not you, not you. Well then, what did you say? Why, it could have been that old man in the green that the defendant saw I have to, cha uh, have to change? Have to call not guilty. It's only right. Man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop. Not in winter. Unless the road was... Yeah. Unless the road was dug up, he'd go the opposite way, would he not? Right? You know, I'm going to press him on it. I'm, gonna I'm just going to press him. Be sure. Just get a bit more here. But you can't deny that there are other routes Mr. Natsumi could have taken back from your box. It's not my box, it's everybody's box. Oh yes, like you drew on the map, you mean. Uh, what was it? Uh, Kalbash Road or something? Precisely. Seems to me that what counts is whether the little Japanese fellow actually went that way or not. Well, yes, that's true. And at that moment, there's no proof that shows he did, is there? Well, yes, that's true as well. As I understand it, the accused himself doesn't remember which way he went, does he? Well, yes, that's annoyingly true. Winter nights are dark and cold, so the way I see it, you'd want to get home as quickly as possible. Yeah, and if the way you wanted to get home had a big hole in it... Yes, hmm. Why is all this true? So really, the only thing that makes sense is if he went home along Briar Road. Ugh, I, I, I'm supposed to be convincing you here. Yeah, I've given it a lot of thought, you know. Then just make up my uh, mind on a whim that he did. It. I mean, if there was some logical reason why he might have gone the Calabash way, it'd be different. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be happy to reconsider my position in that case. Honest, I would. Hmm, the reason why Soseki san might have taken the longer way home. Yes, a good reason. I don't imagine you'll be able to sway this young man's opinion without one. There we go. So yes, it is that. So you pit, pit you. That's what I just, I just needed to be sure. Attention. Those two statements are clearly at odds with one another. I won't say they're at odds, they sort of contribute together, but okay. Well, I suppose the statement, yeah, actually. But so, you get my point, you get my point. At odds, counsel. Explain yourself. Please, don't point it. It wasn't me, I swear. Now what? I just want to get this done and dusted. Well, Jero number three. Oh, me, sir. What do you mean? Jero number five's words just now are extremely significant. Let's take a moment to consider the implications of what's been said on our map of the local area. On the day in question, Mr. Natsumi visited the bookshop to purchase a number of second-hand books. And on the same day, we now know that there were works being carried out on Mishalm Street, making it impassable. Which means that the defendant's route home, assuming he just used the roads, could not have taken him along Mishalm Street and down Briar Road. Oh, yes, of course, but... What do you think, sir? Well, yes, you can't argue with that, really, can you? We must have had a good two yards or more at the pavement. Every gentleman and gentlewoman that came along had to turn back and go the other way. So, the only conclusion is this. The defendant must have taken the longer route back to his lodgings. Yes, I suppose he must have. 
I, I suppose that must be right, eh? Journal number three. You said the following. The man wouldn't have gone around the houses on his way back from the bookshop. But, you see now that he had no choice. Yes. My lord, Mr. Judge, sir, if I may. Yes? I, I don't think in all good conscience that I can say the man's guilty now. Yes, I'd like to see this trial continue so we can get to the bottom of what really happened. What about you, sir? Oh, uh, me? Mm, well, uh, yeah, all right then. If there's a hole in the prosecution's argument, it should be filled in. That's what I say. Even though you're probably going to lose your job, well, potential jobs and potential money. Well, that summation examination has concluded with a rather large shift in opinion. The eyes, two, the nose, four. So the nose have it. Not guilty, they say. Which means we no longer have a consensus among the members of the jury. The trial will continue. Objection! Well, tough. Could it seem churlish of me? To drink from my hello chalice moments after raising an objection. It could seem that, yes. Only to crush it in disgust. Pray forgive the discourtesy. But, Lord Van Sykes? It seems I must retract my earlier remark. What do you mean? I mistakenly credited these jurors with intelligence by describing them as insightful. Yet we have just witnessed them falling for a cheap trick performed by an Eastern entertainer. Eh? Whatever do you mean? Objection! I haven't tricked anyone. Everything I've said is the truth. Indeed, stalwart juror number five was undoubtedly repairing the road, as he claims. I believe you said it was a good two yards of the pavement which you had excavated, sir? That's right. It took me a whole day and they paid me a measly tuppence for it. Now, my learned Nipponese friend, tell me. How many lights do you see? Do you have any notion of the distance that two yards represents? Uh, d uh well, d if I'm honest, I don't have a clue, no. Two yards is a little less than two meters. Less than two meters? That's not much at all. In other words, a distance readily vaulted by anyone of moderate vigor. Would you not agree, my stalwart friend? Eh? Me? Well, I can't say you're wrong, no. What? And did you put chance erect a sign to prevent pedestrians from passing? At the sight of your works. Uh, I wouldn't dream of it. Uh, what a waste of time. No coaches would have had hope of passing anyway, and we just turn any gentlefolk back when they come. Kids just jump right over us all the time. The accused is no gentleman, as far as I can see. I have little doubt, however, that he could spring over a two-yard trench in his meanderings around town. Ah, is that true, is it? The incontrovertible truth is that the books just purchased by the accused were found at the scene. There can be no doubt that on his way back to his lodgings, Mr. Natsumi walked down Briar Road. Oh, crushed in a single sentence. And old man. C -c Cold man? You could talk. You say that around five o'clock on the day in question, you slept and fell on Kabbalash Road? Pray, was there a suspicious-looking Nipponese behind you at the time? Oh, I, 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 um, I can't say as I remember. Because he ran off. You don't remember. 
How about a wager, my learned friend? Say it was this old man that the uh, accused saw. But I would lay a thousand to one against you being able to prove it. I'll... Lord Van Zyke's explain yourself. My lord, if you had such a trenchant argument up your sneeze, why in the world did you not proffer it during the summation examination? Hm. I wanted to give this young fond student the sightseeing experience he no doubt came for. I wanted him to see for himself how the opinion of the jury is so readily swayed. But my hospitality has its limits. And they have been reached, I feel. Oh, he's, he's on now. So, my learned friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over. What, what are you talking about? My lord. The prosecution requests permission to call its next witness to the stand. Granted. Bailiff, bring forth the witness. It next witness? Mr. Nellahodo, do you not remember? I've been told on several occasions that there were eyewitnesses to the incident. Yes, I remember. One of them being a Scotland Yard policeman, no less. I'm afraid that's likely to be the prosecution's next witness. Right, no matter who Van Zykes brings to the stand as his witness, no matter what they say, I believe in Sir seki -san. I know he's innocent. And I'll keep believing to the very end, until this battle is over. We're screwed.